Zell. I'm going to keep whispering just because in all honesty it's easier for me to do that. I don't have to worry about anything else, but yeah, the theme is probably not going to be super uh, tingly. So, if you want to click away, go ahead. If not, continue. Okay. So, why does everything I try fail? Me is almost always, unfortunately, the correct answer. Now, why is that the right answer? Because you're the only thing you can control, right? You can't control these outside circumstances. So, really, even if the outside things outside your control are what caused these things to fail, you are ultimately at fault for trying the thing and not knowing the circumstances were set up for, you know, inevitable failure. Unfortunately, the reason why that is an unfortunate fact is that it's not helpful. It's not helpful to be at fault all the time. Sometimes, hey, you know what? I could have done something different. I could have, you know, gone left when I went right, and that would have changed things up. Okay, fine, great. But <laughs> the second guessing is not really helpful to most people. Some people, maybe it motivates them. I kind of, I don't know if I've ever met anyone like that. I don't know if those people actually exist. I'm sure they do because there's billions of people on the planet, but the second guessing usually does not motivate people. It demotivates people. Now, demotivation. That is probably my main driver of failure or at least lack of success. Now here's the thing. Lack of success and failure are not actually necessarily the same thing. But to an outside observer or to an observer who is judging by different criteria than you might be, they are the same. If you did not succeed at, let's say, making money, enough money to support yourself in, you know, buying a house and, you know, raising a family, so whatever, whatever, you know, your monetary financial goal might be, or someone else's might be, if you did not meet that criteria, you failed. Now, maybe you're running by different criteria. That's fine. I think most people of my generation are. Unless they were raised in serious, like, privation. Like, you know, like they were, they were really deprived of things and they learned to want those things and be very hungry for them, be very driven for them. The material possessions, money, all of that type of stuff is really kind of just not meaningful in, in a very, not, not like, a, I don't even necessarily mean like a spiritual sense. I mean in the sense of it is just, it's just, it's just a foreign alien does not compute, connect. It's meaningless. Legit, like, you know, the all other random flotsam and jetsam of the universe, that's one of them. There's no connection there whatsoever. The people that connect to it in like a, think of like an Andrew Tate kind of way. You know, the people that are like, go out there, get your money, get all this stuff. It's not actually the wealth. It's not the number in a bank account. It's the things that that signifies and 
you know, brings with it. It's the respect, it's the, you know, uh, respect of your peers, it's the accolades, the fame, it's the access, it's the, you know, privilege, power, all that kind of stuff. That's actually what it is. The money itself, the house, the, you know, car, the whatever, meaningless. Completely. I, I honestly don't think anyone actually cares about that stuff, except, again, those people that were, you know, hungry. The people that, you know, didn't have when they were younger and, you know, learned to be hungry for it. I and, you know, most people probably of my generation and certainly, like, you know, kind of in the West probably, just playing percentages here, grew up pretty much all right, pretty much okay, pretty much doing well. Not necessarily, you know, you're able to get everything you want, but if you have, you know, normal expectations, which you, you know, learn instinctively, you know where that wiggle room is, you know what's acceptable, what's, you know, expectable and when you get that it matches and you're good to go so there was never a denial there that is the sort of personal demotivating thing about living today right now is that did not have a real, you know, game changer software switching moment of like, you need to go out and do a thing. It was always couched in you need to do this thing because the thing itself is driving you to want to do it. You know, you need to go get this job because this job is calling to you. This job needs to be done and it needs to be done by you. You need to go out there and write the great American novel. You need to go out there and you need to, you know, be the, you know, rock star. You need to have, you know, not even rock star. You need to make this music. You have this music in your soul and it needs to be put out there in the world. You need to on and on, you get the idea. The result from those things was really an after effect, was really kind of like, you know, ancillary. It didn't really matter because, hey, as long as you got this thing out, that was it. That was actually the sort of societal thrust, you know? I'm sure you've heard this before. If you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. That is everywhere. Was. I don't know if it still is. My guess is yes, to be honest, but it probably rings a little bit more hollow now. But that was everywhere. Every media outlet, every piece of art. I remember pictures. I remember, you know, like the motivational posters in high school had that printed up literally everywhere. Everyone above you is telling you this. Everyone of, you know, the previous generation is telling you this. Okay, but does that previous generation judge you by that metric? They do not. Now, I don't want to cast aspersions on them for doing this because, I mean, you know, it's not their f fault in the sense that they did it intentionally. They were just, you know, trying it out. They were trying it out, and unfortunately, it's, you know, one of the most destructive you know, tenants, you know, we've seen in the last, I don't know, 50 years, I was going to say 100 years, but there are other ones that are worse. You, you know what they are. But that is a sort of 
unfortunate cognitive programming that I think most people of my generation have. You're not motivated to succeed in probably really the only quantifiably, you know, life metric there is, which is financial success. That's it. That's really the only thing you can actually pin down and measure. Everything else is kind of, you know, you have kids. Okay, but that's not, you're not even really successful at that until your kids have kids. You know? Are your kids well adjusted? I mean, yeah, hey, I had five kids. Well, they're all addicted to heroin and all, you know, are, they, all, they all disappear. They're all, you know, homeless junkie drifters. Yeah, you probably didn't succeed there, did you? No. 20 years before when you just had five kids, wow, you're very successful. Yeah. Yeah, so the only way to act, the only thing that you can actually quantify about life in terms of successful or unsuccessful is financial. But you're not, if you're not motivated to seek financial success, why would you? Because here's the thing, it sucks making money, <laughs> except for a couple people who are very lucky, fortunate, blessed to have money come their way via, you know, your parents were rich, you get lucky doing, you know, the, the YouTube stuff, getting creator, you know, whatever. Making money sucks. And generally speaking, the things that you get with money, again, are also devalued, have been eroded, have been destroyed. If I were to get tomorrow, someone would just roll up with, insert your favorite car, you know, some insane $2 million, you know, hyper car, this thing just rolls up, hands me the keys. Is that going to make me happy for literally an instant? I No, it's not. I know it's not. I'm going to think to myself, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell this car. I'm not keeping this car. I don't care about this car at all. This car is going away. Uh, maybe I keep it because it's a better investment in like a year or two. It'll be worth more. But it's meaningless to me. It's, it's, it's if anything, I know this is crazy to think of, but it would be a hassle. Now I have to deal with, you know, selling this car and going through all this kind of stuff. I've got normal other everyday stuff that I have to deal with. Do I have to deal with a tax burden now? Do I have to pay insurance on this car? How am I going to pay the insurance on this car? That's not going to happen. This, I'm sure the insurance for this thing is like, you know, 30 grand a year. You get my point. Making money, generally, usually, always, sucks. And then the things that you get with that money are not worth the hassle. They're not worth it. If you can find a reason for the hassle to be worth it, my hat's off to you. Great. You probably stumbled into it. You probably, and, 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 again, nothing wrong with stumbling into it, but, you know, you probably had kids, you know, maybe when you weren't expecting to, maybe not when you were, you know, oh God, I was totally ready to have kids. Most people no, that's not usually how it happens. It kind of just, you know, life happens and you have kids. And now you've got a reason. Now it's now the struggle's worth something. But it's very difficult to say, all right, well, hey, I'm going to have kids to make my life better, easier, to make my job suck less. That's a psycho thing to say. That is absolutely sociopathic. I'm going to I'm going to have kids so that my nine to five doesn't suck as much. That's crazy. So we're demotivated. We're disillusioned with the only quantifiable metric for success that we have. Happiness, which is the thing that we're all going for, 
you know what, to be perfectly honest, I'm pretty happy. You know, I, I know this seems like a very self-indulgent, depressed, oh my god, he's at the end of his rope. I, to be perfectly honest, I, like, I am, in general, most days, perfectly happy and content. And that's not good for financial success. That's not good for making money. You have to want it. And wanting it usually accompanies not being happy. So, what do I do? Do I get less happy to try to make money? So I get less happy to get more of a thing that's also not going to make me happy. And I know that going in. It'd be one thing if it was, it would be one thing if I could lie to myself. It would be one thing if I said, you know what? Once I make this money, once I make this money, I'll be happy. And everything will get better. That was what my parents, our parents, that's what they thought. That's what they thought. And they believed it. It isn't true, but they believed it. And that makes all the difference. Our generation doesn't have that. My generation, possibly the next generation as well, straight up doesn't have it. That illusion has been pulled apart. The wool peeled from our eyes. It's not going to happen. So then what motivates you to work? What motivates you to get up in the morning, go out there, put the time in, suffer? Is it YouTube videos? Is it the grind set videos? Is it, you know, politics? Is it God? Is it, and you gotta find something, right? Yeah, you do. Unfortunately, all of those things are empty and hollow. They've been hollowed out. They've been pulled apart. They've been spat on and vilified. They've been degraded to the point where I'm sure there are many people like me who would love to be able to have faith and have that be the guiding principle in their lives and have it orient themselves to a greater understanding and a greater communication with themselves, the universe, the history of the human spirit, and the future, the posterity, what we're going to pass on, what we're going to live for, what we're going to be and aspire to. But I don't have that. Faith is a bone I don't have. I'm missing that. Why am I missing it? I was raised Catholic, sort of, kind of, not really. I went to a Catholic school. I went to a, you know, private Jesuit, you know, religious school, had religion study every day or whatever. And I knew my Catholic trivia. Did pretty well with it, but it didn't actually ever connect with the deep-seated, felt belief. And if you don't feel it, if that faith is not a tangible thing for you, well, then it's not there. You can't act like you believe in something. You have to believe in it to actually go through all of the other things that you get with religion. Belief is, unfortunately, for me, and I'm sure some of you, it is a necessary foundation for all the other good stuff you get with it. So we don't have that. I don't have it. So why does everything I try fail? Is it that? Is it the lack of all of these things? Or is it me? Does it come? 
come from outside and it's been put on me. It's come from inside. And I could control it and manipulate it and change it and therefore the circumstances be damned. I make my fate. Okay. Except there's a lot of things inside about you that without, I don't know, 20 years of, you know, intensive shock therapy and, you know, copious drug regimes, uh, you can't change about yourself. Like your general personality. I'm a generally stoic, fairly contented person. And that's not going away. That kind of a thing, you know, bad things don't really hurt me that much. They don't really sting. So, to be honest, while I'd rather not be, let's say, homeless, I don't think it would really hurt me that bad. And speaking of, I don't think it would hurt most people, to be perfectly honest. I think a lot of people aspire to it. A lot of people find romance in it. The whole, I mean, think about the whole van life movement. That is legitimately just, you're, you're living in your car. That's called homelessness. That's called your a homeless drifter. There are hundreds of like super successful YouTube channels that just focus on that. And the romance, the romantic idea is similar to things that have happened in the past. You know, the idea of freedom the idea of getting away from the, the hustle and bustle and the, the nine to five and the grind and all that kind of stuff, that's not new. But in the past, it was synonymous with rugged individualism, you know, cowboy, mountain man, pioneering type stuff. It was the same as struggle. The struggle was actually what you were looking for. You wanted the struggle because the struggle earned you something. You got the fruit of your labor. You got the sweat off your brow. You earned it. Van life is, I don't want anything. I want an experience of being on the open road, looking out the window, looking at these types of things, and essentially, I just want the world to sort of pass me by. That's it. I don't really care about having an impact in the world because, eh, is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? I can just experience what I want, and the world goes on as it is. Probably better off that way, right? probably better off. I don't put my hat in the ring. The world's been fine before. It'll be fine after, whether I get involved or not. Yeah. How many people feel like that? A lot. Again, hundreds of channels, hundreds of thousands, millions of subscribers would agree with me. That would be evidence in my favor. So then, what do we do with this? If everything 
hasn't been. It's been doing, it's been doing, you know, all right. But, you know, I've been adding to it. I've been doing all kinds of different things with it. So I've been pushing pretty hard on it to the degree that I've succeeded on it is really kind of a waste of the amount of effort that I've put into it. But again, I don't care and I'm kind of just supposed to be grateful, right? Yeah, pretty much. So then, where do we go from there? Do we try to fake it? Do we try to fake it like, oh my god, like, like should I be crying right now that my YouTube channel is not, you know, eminently profitable? Should I have, you know, weeping tears in my eyes because some job that I applied for, they never got back to me? Oh, I was trying to learn this, and you know what? It fell by the wayside. I got busy with other things and forgot about it. Wow, what a failure. I don't care. It's just not there. I don't have it in me. It sounds, again, self-indulgent. It sounds denial -y. It's just an honest reflection of the feelings that I have, which is to say, I don't feel that failure. To me, it's not a failure. It's, I suppose, a lack of success. But it's not really negative. It's middle of the road. It's not too far to success. It's not too far to failure. It's just right in the middle. Which... If you were to ask any of those philosophers that were your fifth grade teachers where you should be, they would say you need to be on the middle path. You need to be, yeah, don't string your boat too tight. It'll snap too loose. It'll fall off. You want to be right in the middle. That's the zone. That's where you're at. Don't be chasing success so much you lose yourself. Don't be ignoring all of your responsibilities such that you, you know, die. Do you want to be right on that middle path? Okay, been on the middle path. I like it here. Well, you need to get off that. You need to be chasing that success a little bit more, all right? The number in your bank account is too low for my approval. Okay. So what? You want me to make money to buy stuff that you made unaffordable by your terrible policy decisions? You want me to make money to buy stuff that I don't want, I don't need, and is a bad deal? I, I, I mean, I'm not going to do that. Like, to be perfectly honest, it's just not going to happen. I'm not. It's just, I mean, again, I can fake it to a point. But that point is going to be way far away from where somebody wants it to be. So why try? Why try it all? Well, you try some things because you think the act of trying is good enough. It's worthwhile. It's worth doing. Okay, fair enough. You can live with that. Why try other things? To please other people? You can. You can do it. It works. To a point, to a degree. For a time. Hopefully, ideally, you can learn to love it. You can fake it until you make it, but you're not faking it anymore. It's real.
ideally that's what you can do but again unfortunately for me that hasn't happened yet like faith I haven't seen it yet I haven't felt it yet so is that failure me is it because of me is it something I can change and unfortunately the question does pop into my head is it something that I should change is it something worth changing or is it everyone else that's in the wrong <laughs>